Good morning, Kid Zone. It's Pastor Amy. I hope that you are well. It's very sunny out these days. I hope you're getting lots of vitamin D from the sun. Hey, I think that you might remember that we've been talking a lot about the Holy Spirit. We talked a couple of weeks ago about how the Holy Spirit came to seal us, which meant to make sure that everybody knew and that we knew that we had a special job from God. We know that that job is to love God and love others, love people. And then last week, we talked about how the Holy Spirit actually makes us able to love God and love people. He gives us the power to do that, which is very, very cool. Well, this week, I want to talk to you about listening to the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God speaks to us. Now, not necessarily like the Spirit of God used to speak in Bible times, because a lot of times in the Old Testament, in those really early stories, we'll hear about God speaking in a thunderous voice out of the clouds. And we don't hear that very much anymore. But remember, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, and so sometimes... Holy Spirit whispers and we hear maybe something that we should say or we feel something that we should do or our mind says I need to change how I'm thinking and that's all because the Holy Spirit is speaking true things to us I want to remind you of a little boy and um, we're gonna learn from from this little boy about what to do when we think we hear the Spirit of God does everybody remember Samuel Okay, here's a little refresher. Samuel was the son of Hannah. Hannah was the woman who wanted so much to have a baby and she wasn't getting a baby and she wasn't getting a baby and she prayed and prayed and prayed. Finally said to God, God, if you will let me have a baby, I will make sure that that baby serves you. And guess what? Hannah had a little baby boy and his name was Samuel. Now, God kept his promise to Hannah, and then Hannah kept her promise to God. So when Samuel was about five or six years old, Hannah took Samuel to the synagogue. In those days, that was where um, the priests or the pastors lived. Hannah brought Samuel to the synagogue, and a priest there named Eli became the person who was taking care of Samuel. And it was Eli's job then to train Samuel and to teach Samuel how to love God and love people. One night, Samuel was sleeping on his, I don't know if they had beds or if they had cots or if they slept on blankets on the floor. I'm not sure how they slept, but he was sleeping. And he all of a sudden woke up. Samuel, he heard. Samuel, that must be Eli, Samuel thought. So he went running over into Eli's room and he tapped shoulder and he said, I'm here. Eli looked at him and he said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Go to sleep. I didn't call you. I don't know what's going on, but you need to go back to sleep because it's nighttime and I need to go back to sleep because it's nighttime. So go to sleep. So Samuel went back to his bed and he laid down and he fell asleep. Samuel woke up again. He thought, oh, Eli's calling. So he went running into Eli and he tapped him on the shoulder. I'm here. And Eli said, Samuel, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed and Eli went back to sleep and Samuel fell asleep on his bed. <laughs> Samuel. He woke up and again he went running over to Eli and he said, Eli, I'm here. Well, Eli suddenly realized what was going on. And he said, Samuel, you're going to go back to bed and you're going to go back to sleep. Next time you hear somebody call your name and it wakes you up, I want you to say this right there where you are in your bed. Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. See, Eli knew he wasn't the one calling Samuel in the middle of the night. Eli knew God was calling Samuel in the middle of the night. So he taught him the words to say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to his bed and he laid down and Eli went back to sleep. They were all sleeping. Samuel, and Samuel woke up 
and he remembered what Eli said. So he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. At that moment, Samuel became a prophet because God's spirit began to speak to him so many things that God wanted his people to hear. So what did Samuel do that was important? First of all, when something got his attention, he listened and he responded. He didn't know where it was coming from, so he went to the person that he thought might know. He went to his mentor or his trainer. You guys might call them your parents or your pastors, right? He went to them and he said, I'm here. The second thing that Samuel did, he kept listening and he kept responding. So every time he heard or felt something, he got up and he went to somebody trusted. And the other important thing is that Samuel trusted that person. He trusted Eli to give him the right answers and to direct him in the right way. So, you see, we all have the same job, to love God and love people. But we have different ways that we're called by God to do that. Samuel was called to be a prophet. That meant that God gave him very specific messages that God wanted him to speak to people so that they would know. For some people, the way that God wants us to love God and love people is by giving people food or giving people clothes or giving money to the people who need it. For some people, loving God and loving people means standing in front of a crowd and helping people to sing songs to God. For some people, loving God and loving people means helping people who are hurting to find healing and health. For some people, loving God and loving people means creating artistic work that helps people see who God is and who they are because of who God is. We all have different ways of loving God and loving people. When you think you're hearing something from God, this is what I want you to do. First of all, ask yourself, does this match the heart of God? Because remember, you know the heart of God. The heart of God is always what's best for everyone, right? It's all about what's good for people. So ask yourself, does this match God's heart? If you're still not sure, check it against the Bible. Does the Bible tell me to do this too? If it does, it's a good bet you should probably do it. And the third part is the part that Samuel helps us know. We are all younger than somebody else. And other people who are older than us sometimes know things that we don't. And so one of the best things we can do when we think we're hearing from God is to go and ask another person who's older. Does this sound like God's voice to you? Do you think I'm hearing this correctly? What do you think it means? And have a conversation. Because remember this, the same spirit of God that lives in you and is talking to you also lives in every other person who believes in God. And so if God is telling you something, the person that you talk to, the Spirit of God in them will recognize that too. And it will help us all to be able to pay attention to God. And it will help us all to be able to do what God calls us to do, whatever it is, to love God and love people. I love you all and I am so excited to see how God, who lives in you, helps you to love him and to love people. Already I see it in so many ways. You all have so many different gifts. You are artists, you are lovers, you are generous givers, you are servants, you are helpers, you are singers and you are dreamers, and I am so excited that you are part of this whole great big body of Christ. I love you. More importantly, Jesus loves you and the Holy Spirit lives within you so that you'll never forget that. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.